Hey, all you fellow bus nuts, geeks, and enthusiasts out there, welcome to another episode of Motor Coach World. My name is James. John Wright asked for a video explaining the Cummins versus Detroit engines and Allison transmission versus ZF transmission and retarder versus Jake brake. Now, I would be doing you guys in each of these topics a great disservice if I were to try and squeeze all these topics into a 10 to 14 minute video. So, John, I'm gonna break these apart and do one video for each of these items over time. Today, we're gonna to talk about the ZF AS-Tronic transmission, what it is and how it compares to a regular automatic transmission like the one you probably have in your car. To really understand where the ZF AS-Tronic transmission comes from, we kinda of have to take a dive into the past for a bit. Back in the day, all cars, buses, and trucks were built with manual transmissions or otherwise known as stick shifts or standard transmission. First of all, let me point out that the term standard or manual transmission existed only after the automatic transmission became available as an option when purchasing a vehicle. Yes, that's right, there was no such thing as an automatic transmission prior to 1940. And the first car to have an automatic transmission was the 1948 Oldsmobile. Prior to the 1980s in the US, you would be hard pressed to find an automatic transmission as an option when purchasing any type of vehicle. And anyone who wanted to drive would have had to learn how to shift through the gears. In the 1980s, as the automatic transmission became refined and popular, more and more family cars and private vehicles were built with them. And today, the automatic transmission has all but dominated the market here in the United States. As of 2020, only 13% of all cars sold in the United States are offered with a manual transmission, my truck being one of them. It's sad, really. We should teach our kids how to drive manuals. With that said, the first actual bus to have an automatic transmission as an option was the GM Old Look Transit Bus, available for operators to purchase with the two-speed Allison V-Drive transmission, starting in 1948. Now, why anyone would name a model of a vehicle they produce Old Look is beyond me. I would have hired a new marketing agent after that. Starting in the late 1980s, the automatic transmission became more prevalent in the US, and the majority of Americans chose the easy road when purchasing their next car. Unless you were a pure car enthusiast, the automatic transmission became the preferred option for the public. In the commercial industry, however, trucks and buses were still mostly equipped with the manual transmission, and the migration to the automatic transmission for the commercial side was much slower. Now, the primary reason for this, amongst many other factors, was the fact that manual transmissions would last longer when operated properly in the hands of a skilled driver, and thus companies would save more money on maintenance and transmission replacements for their fleet. Now, keep in mind that in the 80s and 90s, anyone old enough to enter the workforce in the transportation industry would have most likely grown up learning how to drive a manual transmission vehicle. And because of that, trucks and bus companies in the 80s and 90s continued to enjoy a steady supply of new drivers that knew how to properly operate a clutch and a shifter. It wasn't until the late 90s and early 2000s that the transportation industry started noticing the majority of the new drivers entering the workforce did not know how to drive a manual. Even with months of training, the new drivers would learn how to drive a manual truck or bus, but not with the experience of someone who had driven one for years, if not decades. So what resulted was companies noticing how many of their vehicles were needing new clutches and transmission replacements far before their time due to inexperienced drivers behind the stick. As time went on, coach bus manufacturers started pumping out more and more automatic vehicles from their assembly lines. They were easier to drive, which meant less training for the drivers and the much more comfortable ride for the passengers. By the mid 2000s, a manual transmission motor coach was a rare find as most companies began to replace their fleets with the automatic transmission. A very popular transmission that was not only installed on many different make and models of buses, but trucks and even military armored personnel vehicles as well was the Allison B500 and the Allison B500R, with the B500R having an additional retarder that uses transmission oil pressure to help the vehicle slow down without using its brakes, thus giving the operator an alternative way to slow the vehicle down. Now, as the truck and bus side of things slowly moved over to the automatic transmission, between the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, something else was kind of brewing on the side. The lines between the automatic transmission and the manual transmission was being played around with, and a mutation of the two was slowly coming to form. You see, the automatic transmission still had the problem of not lasting as long as the manual ones, and owners and managers who stuck with the manual transmission fleets were facing more and more burned out clutches and damaged gears because of 
poor shifting habits of drivers as well as trainers not training drivers properly on how and when to use the clutch. So the million dollar question was, how do you make a manual transmission where the clutch would operate automatically and thus taking out the human error element? It would in essence be the best of both worlds. Around the late 90s, a company called Eaton Fuller came out with the two-top and the four-top transmissions. A two-top transmission was basically a regular manual transmission that a driver would have to shift up to the last two highest gears, and then the vehicle would take over automatically shifting between the top two gears. This would alleviate the driver from having to shift gears during high speeds. The four-top transmission was the same thing, except leaving the top four gears for the vehicle to control instead of just the top two gears. Mainly installed on semi-trucks and other heavy-duty vehicles, not many of these were made as it proved very unpopular with the drivers operating them, and none made it into the bus industry. Transmission manufacturers took a close look at these concepts, and after going back to the drawing board, what evolved from the two-top and four-top transmissions was the new auto-shift centrifugal clutch transmission often mistakenly referred to as the ZF transmission. You see, ZF is actually the name of a German car parts company headquartered in the city of Friedrichshafen. The company originally called Zahnradfabrik Friedrichshafen is now commonly abbreviated to as ZF. Among many different types of truck and bus parts, ZF also made many different types of automatic and manual transmissions for many different types of vehicles. In 2003, the ZF company introduced their version of the auto shift centrifugal clutch transmission that they dubbed the AS-Tronic transmission. The AS-Tronic transmission was the ZF company's solution to the question of having a manual transmission without the need for the driver to do the shifting or having to use the clutch. Weighing 500 pounds less than the Allison B500 automatic transmission, it also increased the vehicle's fuel economy. Aside from the light weight of the AS-Tronic transmission, the design of the gearing was also aimed to save fuel as well. ZF offered the AS-Tronic transmission in 6-speed, 10-speed, 12-speed, and 16-speed options, the 6-speed version being known as the AS-Tronic Lite. This caught the eyes of many bus company owners, and immediately there were demands to have the AS-Tronic transmission as an option for coach buses, which at this point was being offered from motor coach manufacturers such as MCI, Prevost, and Van Hool. Now anyone who has ever driven or been a passenger on a vehicle with a manual transmission would describe the acceleration as not consistent. In order to accelerate, the driver has to push down on the clutch to shift gears. And during that time it takes to perform this process, the vehicle would no longer be accelerating. As soon as the driver successfully shifts into the next sequential gear, the vehicle would then resume its acceleration. This process repeats until the driver has hit his or her desired speed or when the driver has reached the highest gear that the vehicle offers. A passenger on a motor coach that had a ZS Tronic transmission would experience the same sensation as the vehicle shifts through its gears. A car enthusiast riding on the coach would very likely think, wow, this bus is a stick shift. But should this passenger walk up to the driver's area to have a peek at the controls, confusion would set in immediately as the shifter and clutch would simply not be there. You see, the AS Tronic transmission works by having a computer automatically activate the clutch and shift the transmission based on the rotation per minute or RPM of the vehicle's engine. Any coach with an AS Tronic transmission would otherwise behave just like a vehicle with a manual transmission. When on an incline, if the driver should release the brake to accelerate, the coach would actually begin to roll back until the driver starts to accelerate. When accelerating in a bus equipped with the AS Tronic transmission, the driver and passengers would feel the same shifting patterns as in a manual and be able to hear the engine RPMs go up and down between each shift. But a passenger would notice the driver not performing any of the shifting and clutching if he or she were to be sitting in a seat with a clear view of the driver. As with many things in life, we tend to realize that taking the human element out of a process, especially when it comes to controlling a vehicle, is not always a good thing. Drivers had a love-hate relationship with ZF's AS Tronic transmission. Some loved it and some hated it. Now, some of the problems with having a manual transmission that shifts by itself was that it left the driver feeling helpless at times. Acceleration was extremely slow. This was problematic when merging onto an interstate on an on-ramp with an upward incline. By the time the driver merged with traffic, the coach would be going at a dangerously slow speed, causing traffic to swerve around. 
The transmission could be easily confused when a driver slows down to come to a stop and then suddenly, before reaching a complete stop, decides to accelerate again. The transmission would take a few extra seconds to decide whether it needed to shift into neutral or go back into gear. This would inevitably also confuse other traffic around the bus as they would assume the bus was coming to a stop and either begin to go around the bus or take the right of way at a stop sign when the operator of the bus was actually trying to accelerate to cross the intersection, causing near collisions. Trying to make delicate maneuvers when parking or fitting into a tight spot was also sometimes a challenge. A skilled stick shift driver relied on the feeling of the clutch to gauge how much to push down on the accelerator in order to start moving. On an AS Tronic transmission, the clutch was now being controlled by the transmission and the driver would be left without this sensation to help gauge how much the vehicle would move when pushing down on the accelerator, often resulting in violent lunges forwards or backwards. Another problem was in heavy traffic, drivers constantly needing to stop, go, stop, go would face a nightmarish situation when operating an AS Tronic. The repetitive jerking forward and stopping would sometimes cause passengers to get motion sick. All these factors would give the passengers on board as well as those outside watching a poor impression of the driver's abilities. Even if the driver were to be given the opportunity to explain that this bus has an AS Tronic transmission, very few people would even understand what that entails. It's kind of like how we use the momentum of the car to help us judge how much to press on the brake pedal when coming to a stop. If we could somehow take that feeling away from the driver, we would start seeing skilled drivers unable to judge how hard to press down on the brake pedal, and all of a sudden, a once smooth driver now screeches to a stop every time he or she approaches a stop sign. With that said, some drivers didn't mind the AS Tronic transmission at all, and fell in love with them. If a driver worked in the company where they were assigned a permanent vehicle, they would eventually get used to the way the coach shifted and accelerated. However, not all companies assign permanent vehicles to drivers. Our drivers get assigned a different bus every day depending on what trip or type of service they were performing. This made the driver's acclimation to an AS Tronic transmission a very slow and painful process. Today, motor coach companies are starting to see less and less ZF companies AS Tronic or any other brand of the auto shift centrifugal clutch transmission in their fleets. Despite the benefits, it was simply not significant enough to justify all the new problems that these new transmissions brought with them. It was a good idea, it simply just didn't stick in the bus industry. Now, I'm really looking forward to reading the comments after this one. I know that this can be a touchy subject as there tends to be strong views on both sides of the street. <laughs> you see what I did there, both sides of the street? <laughs> Talk about buses. If you would like to give your opinion on which transmission you feel is best, please leave a comment down below. I do ask that everyone commenting please show respect to each other's opinions, even if you disagree. If you enjoyed this video and found it inspirational, insightful, and informative, please consider supporting my channel and my work by becoming a patron on my Patreon page, patreon.com slash motorcoach. You can become a patron for as low as a dollar a month, that's $12 a year. Your support will help me stay caffeinated as I spend late nights staying up, editing, and writing my scripts for these videos. Thank you all for watching, and remember, if you're watching this, you are part of the motor coach world.